Hey everyone, it's Dan here at Datron Dynamics, and today we are going to do a walkthrough on our M8 Cube model, uh, give you the same sort of demo that you would get if you were here in person, so let's get started. All right, we'll start by opening things up. So first of all, the door, the standard door, as you can see, swings open straight up, give you good accessibility ergonomically into the machine, but there's also an automatic door option available uh, for whether you have uh, high volume production, people going in and out all day long, or you have a robotic arm loading parts in and out. So that's one kind of cool fact you might not know about. Uh, the construction of the machine, we have a rigid steel gantry and then a polymer concrete table. Um, very rigid, um, but allows us to have, have very nimble, fast movement. Uh, great acceleration characteristics on the M8 cube. Uh, moving on from there, the construction of the cabin is all steel as well, and it all tapers down to our chip tray here. So this is how we manage our chips. We have basically nearly dry coolant system here. Uh, using ethanol with our microjet system. Uh, so the chips are end up dry and they sort of just clear with the movement of the tool, the movement of the axes, uh, and the compressed air that we use for cooling. So they all scatter off to the side and are tapered down into the chip tray, which pulls straight out. When we pull this out, you can see everything accumulates down here and then we can easily clean it up uh, with vacuum or a dust pan, something along those lines. So it's easy to scoop everything out of here. If we want to take a peek underneath the machine, we can get a look at another neat feature, which is the vacuum system. So you can see here two vacuum valves are routed up through the bottom of the table and that's how we supply vacuum to our vacuum table on top so that you don't have to worry about plumbing afterwards. It is routed during the installation of the machine, and then from there you just install your vacuum table on top and get to work. Uh, one of the other really cool facts uh, about our safety system, if you look at the chip tray here, we actually have a safety interlock built onto our chip tray that corresponds to a sensor on the back. So that way you can't operate the machine uh, with the door open. We have a safety interlock on the door, but we also have one on the chip tray so that you can't remove the chip tray and try to operate it, operate it in that state. Uh, while we're still under here, you can see our direct drive motors for our Y-axis. So our Y-axis is dual motor drive, one on each side, and those are direct drive onto ball screws. The components here are by Bosch Rexroth, really reputable brand, and they're precision ground ball screws. All right, looking inside the cabin here, we take a peek at the table, and you'll notice this is a full table version. We have two variations on the tables for M8 cubes. We have a B table, which is this, the full version, and then the A table, which is a version with a cutout that is about uh, 200 millimeters deep or so, and about 500 millimeters wide, roughly. Um, that allows you to vertically clamp parts because they can span all the way down to the bottom of the chip tray. So we have an option for vertical T-slot tables. So if you're doing plate machining and you have features on the side that you need to mill or thread, then you have the ability to take it off your vacuum table and put it into the cutout uh, for easy machining and not have to worry about stacking a part way up on your table and having it hanging up in outer space. It's clamped nice and low uh, in the machine table. Um, after that, we actually have two compressed air uh, sections here for either that vertical T-slot clamp, because those are pneumatically driven, or we have optional T-slot tables that can go on the top here that are also pneumatically driven. So you have easy access to compressed air right inside your cabin. All right, up top here you can see, this is the other side of our vacuum port that we saw on the underside of our table. You take off this protective cover here with a couple of these Allen screws, and then your port is accessible. Then you just bolt your vacuum table on top. You could also tap into this if you had a custom vacuum fixture as well. And you can see there, that actually centers up with one of our mating conicals. This is how we mount our fixturing to our table. So instead of having a traditional T-slot table where you need to use T-slot nuts and, and tram your fixtures in to be straight, we actually use mating conicals. So we have a female conical in the table that is actually milled by the machine after it's been calibrated. So you know that these are true to the axes of the machine. And then we put our male conical onto a subplate. So all we need to do is take that, line it up with these on the table, drop it in, and bolt it down. Every um, conical has an M6 by 1 thread on it so that we can bolt this directly down. You could even use a vacuum source like that with a gasket in order to suck this down to the table and hold it firmly in place for really quick fixture changing.
All right, moving on to our tool changer. So we have a three kilowatt spindle on our MA cube here, and that means we have HSK E25 tool holders. So we have a 12 station HSK uh, tool changer. All right, so we have this open. You can see that that rolled open and it protects all of our HSKs here uh, from getting chips uh, accumulating into the HSK interface here. So we have 12 positions there uh, protected from chips. And then to the left side, we have our tool measuring post with a carbide face and an integrated air blow off nozzle. One question we get pretty often is what are these cutouts here in the table for? And that's actually for if we have one of our 15 station tool changers for direct shank spindles, uh, but also it serves a purpose on our tool changers here that it allows for chip clear out so that no chips are getting uh, pulled into the tool changer by the drawer itself. All right, so our Z axis here, as you can see, this is uh, covering our three kilowatt spindle here, protecting chips from getting inside. Uh, down here, this is actually our coolant nozzle setup. So it's really uh, compact and discreet. Uh, four nozzles surrounding the tool, spraying uh, air and ethanol mixture onto our cutting tool. We'll talk more about that system in a minute. Uh, but then we have our camera here located uh, to the right side, and that is for uh, our next probing functionality. Uh, we have uh, other versions of this machine with a different control that have a camera uh, intended for fiducial recognition. Um, there are two separate systems. This one is for that integrated probing system that we use for the swipe gestures. Uh, and then on the right side here, we have our integrated probe. So this is the uh, swing arm that swings down. Uh, and then our Renishaw TP20 probe is located here. Before we move on, there's one really cool thing about the TP20 Renishaw probe that we have here, and it's magnetic breakaway. It's something that I don't really see a lot throughout the industry, is that if you're gonna have an accident with this, it actually has a magnetic coupling on it to either minimize the amount of damage that you have or mitigate it completely. Since it can detach fully, if this falls off when you have a little accident, then all you have to do is realign it with the markers here. So you have a triangle that lines up with the triangle right here. It recouples. You recalibrate it and then you're good to go. All right, one question we get really often is, are these lights just here to look cool? And the answer is no, they are actually functional. And the purpose behind them is they're sort of like a status light that you would see on top of a typical VMC. So blue means ready. And then we have yellow for manual override for operating the machine by hand. Uh, and then we have a light colored blue for when we are hand jogging the machine. And then we have red to indicate an error or a fault, something like that to get your attention. And then green, it's the color of money. That's when we're making chips. All right, now we're on the right hand side of the uh, MA cube here. And I want to take off the side panel, which means I have to get our operating terminal out of the way. Um, and before I do that, I can actually show off just how easy it is to uh, change the setup on this. Uh, it's really ergonomic. We have the ability to change the tilt of our terminal. We also have the ability to change the tilt of our keyboard. And then we can also change the height of the operating terminal. So if you have users of any different variety of heights, this can be accommodating to them. So it's super ergonomic and easy to use. Uh, now we have our side panel here. We have one of these on each side. And on this side, we'll get it off. Pretty standard machine key for removing this. You can see here it's mostly wiring and then air lines for our pneumatic features. Uh, and it also serves as a nice place for storage. Uh, we have in here some, some stuff from the original machine installation, uh, some additional wiring for the fourth axis, uh, things like that. So you can actually uh, keep things really close to the machine here for long-term storage. All right, now we're on the left-hand side of the MA cube. We have the side panel off. We can see that there's a little bit more going on on this side. We have our incoming power, 400 volt, three phase. And then we also have our incoming air supply, as well as the regulator, a variety of different pneumatic cylinders here as well. We also have a little bit more of our electrical wiring running through here, uh, as well as some of our IO connections. So we have connections for our spindle chiller, uh, for an auxiliary vacuum pump or a vacuum cleaner, uh, as well as an ethernet connection for internet or server access. Now we're in the back of the machine and the first thing to take a look at is our microjet cooling system. So this is a nine liter microjet tank 
Comes in a nine liter and five liter size, as well as dual tank setups. And let me show you how it works. So it's a pressurized tank. So that we adjust the amount of pressure being supplied to it. So our black knob here, we lift that up and then turn it to adjust how much pressure we're applying to the fluid that's inside. In this case, we're using denatured ethanol as our coolant. We could also put uh, AccuLube, some sort of um, light viscosity oil in here as well. So we adjust how much pressure we're applying to that. That regulates the flow of the fluid. Then we also have a separate knob here uh, to adjust the air pressure that's being applied uh, for atomization. So you can see here, those join together in this hose where we have the outer set of holes. That's what supplies air for atomization and the center hole is what uh, supplies our fluid. So that is a hose within a hose. That's how the microjet system works. Okay, so when you need to fill this, it's a really straightforward process. First, there's a black sleeve here that you pull up, which releases all the pressure from the microjet tank. So then this is safe to open up. We take off this black safety cap. Then here you'll actually see there's a little Schrader valve that you depress so that you can take a specific funnel that threads in that also depresses the Schrader valve and allows you to fill it. Fill it up here. You have a sight glass on the side. Fill it to your maximum level here. Unthread your funnel. Put your cap back on. And then repressurize your tank. Now we're in the back electronics panel of the machine. What's really nice about the design of our electronics panel is that if you have to service it for any reason, everything's clearly labeled and easy to work on. All right, on top of the machine, we have our ventilation fan. Uh, this is what brings fresh air in from the top of the machine to get all of our uh, coolant vapors to sort of work their way out of the bo bottom because ethanol is heavier than air. Uh, bringing in air from the top allows it to flush the vapors out uh, so it doesn't build up inside of the cabin. On top of the machine here, we have our spindle chiller unit, uh, and that's used on most of our spindle configurations in our machine. This uh, runs cooled water through the spindle to keep it at a constant 25 degrees Celsius. And one last cool little feature is that there is a channel that runs all the way through the back of the machine for all of our service connections, incoming air, power, and all of our chiller connections as well. All right, that was a walkthrough on our MA Cube. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something, but if you still have questions, visit our website, www.datron.com, to learn more about our whole machine lineup, including the MA Cube. Have a great day.